for today's session. Uh, for three days, three uh, course on pipe stem fundamental. This course is divided into three sessions, which will be like today's our first session, and next session will be on 19th and 25th June uh, at the same time. This session uh, is instructed by Mr. Ahmed Shamri. uh who is a senior petroleum engineer with 18 plus years of experience in oil and gas production optimization and digital field solution uh he is currently holding the position of product champion for the multi phase flow simulator pipe pin uh, uh prior to joining the slumber in 2017 he has also worked with saudi aramco for 15 years and served as a technical consultant and a project man, uh, manager in various oil and gas design and optimization projects that cover diverse production engineering areas uh, like flow assurance asset, asset modeling advanced completion and artificial lift so without any further delay i would like to request mr ahmed shamli sir to start the session uh, over to you sir thank you chata thank you nikhil uh, first of all uh, i'd like really to uh, Commend and uh, congratulate uh, Petroleum Engineering Association for completing one year. Um, this is really an excellent example of um, um, students who have who are still haven't uh, started the uh, their business yet, their journey into into uh, the the oil and gas industry, and on then their own personal initiative they started uh, something. Um, One year ago, uh, Nikhil and, and his team they started this uh, new group uh, to uh, basically conduct workshops, help uh, the fellows in, in the petroleum engineering industry with uh, with you know workshops and 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 uh, presentations. And now, after one year, uh, we we see that all this excellent success. Uh, Uh, combining uh, many professionals from around the world continuous uh, delivery of uh, such workshops this is really um, very very impressive and uh, when uh, you know the uh, the team approached me to to deliver this this uh, course um, i didn't hesitate for a, for a moment uh, and this is because i believe that um um you know all the students all the fresh graduates all the people who are now seeking for a job uh, and also all the pro professionals who are who are on the job today um they need uh, they need awareness they need knowledge and they need uh, access to that technology uh you know in order for them to to excel and 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 uh, become better professionals in in this area Uh, today i'm going to share with you the first session of um, um a three days training course in in pipes and pipes and fundamentals um i i'm not really sure whether we can really call it a uh, training course because usually from schlumberger standard uh training means that the audience need to practice hands on uh experience and use the software um and unfortunately since uh, this is not possible because uh, um you know the only way the only i would say uh, formal way to to uh, provide uh, licenses for training is through universities i know that uh, pipesim uh, is uh, is available uh, unfortunately uh, unofficially many people are using uh, unofficial copies of course um I, i cannot say that we in schlumberger accept that but it's a fact uh so maybe uh if if you have your own copy you can also follow me once once i go to the to the to the demo uh today's session i'm going to give you a general overview about the software and it's it's uh, basic capabilities and uh, why we use it what is the main uh, features and functionalities Uh, and then in the next week same time i'm going to talk about uh, wells and then uh, the 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 week after i'm going to I'm going to talk about the network specifically okay 
So let's start. Um, PipeSim uh, is classified uh, as a flow assurance steady state simulator, okay? Or multi-phase fluid flow simulator uh, in which uh, the, uh, the user can, or the, the engineer can, can use the software to model the fluid flow in the wells and the pipelines with the main object objective, which is flow assurance. And this term is very important because in our industry, um, most of the uh, fields around the world, maybe uh, except maybe ex exception in the U.S., where uh, the uh, you know there are there are a lot of fields there that are actually uh, producing uh, very low flow rate, in which they can actually combine the the uh, oil in trucks or or, or storage or sto store it on, on the surface but in everywhere uh, you know even in the us the main transport uh, means for oil and gas and of course water is pipelines and it's very important that we make sure that the oil or the hydrocarbon will flow in these pipelines uh, successfully without any problem, okay? And that's why the term flow assurance, we need to assure the flow, okay? So um, PipeSim uh, falls under uh, the uh, classification of steady state multi-phase flow simulator. In Schlumberger, we have another product called Olga, which is uh, the transient flow simulator. The, the main difference between steady state and simulator, fluid flow simulator, and transient flow simulator is the fact that, as, as the name states, you know, it is steady state, meaning we don't take, in PipeSim, we don't take into consideration the, uh, the, the disturbance time. And that's why we, we, we uh, there is no, let's say, time concept in PipeSim where, you know, it, it shows you the impact of, let's say, opening a well quickly, closing the well quickly, what are the disturbances in the system? This is mainly used by, by, by Olga, okay? Uh, in PipeSim, it is used uh, to model uh, the steady state flowing conditions in the, in the wells and the pipelines. You can use it in the design, okay? Uh, the design phase of your field where you can design well tubulars and completions. And also you can design pipelines and equipments such as, you know, surface boosters. Uh, you can also uh, de design the best pipeline diameter, etc. Once your field is installed, uh, your wells are drilled and they are producing. Now we go to the operations phase. So you need to manage liquid slugs and surges, for example, or you need to optimize production. When, I, when we say optimize production, this is really a very wide term, but in a sense, you need to maximize your hydrocarbon production with the lowest cost, okay? And to, to achieve it on the long term. So that's why when we go to the production optimization, this is, I think, what, what we are going to talk about in two weeks from now, where we are going to, to look into how we can optimize production, how we can maximize production at the lowest cost and you know increase our recovery from from the reservoir and also we need to look into wells and pipeline integrity we need to manage erosion and corrosion and avoid blockage this blockage could be caused by uh, solid precipitations uh, such as scale uh, or hydrate for that matter um, um i don't know if you if you if you heard uh, what happened in the in the uh, us about maybe two, three months ago, where um, the temperature in, in uh, Houston, Texas, uh, dropped significantly um, below uh, zero degrees, of, of course, Celsius. And this uh, resulted in uh, forming a lot of hydrates in the pipelines. So the pipelines were, were blocked to, to transport uh, fuel to the, to the uh, power plants. And then this resulted in, in uh, a major, a major power shutdown in, in Houston, Texas, right? So this is a, just a simple example of 
how can um, uh, the, the, the hydrocarbon conditions block the flow? And, and that's why, again, the term flow assurance, okay? So with this introduction, let's, let's just also uh, take a, a look into um, the, the, the pressure uh, concept in, a, in any production system, okay? So this is a cross section of, of a production system. As you can see, um, and you, of course we all know that the production starts from the reservoir, okay? The, 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 oil, the hydrocarbon, whether it's oil or gas, will, will flow in the porous media until it reaches the well. And then it will flow inside the, 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 the tubing. Maybe we have artificial lift or not. And then we go to the surface facilities, we reach to the separator, and then we either take the gas, the oil, and maybe the water to inject it back or to, to basically use it somewhere else, okay? So for that, let me see here. For that, you know, we need to make sure that if we, if we need really to, to, to um, consider the flow assurance for a well only, the system, and the, the, the uh, let's say, the simulator needs to consider all the pressure, pressure boundaries along the flow path, all right? That's why we will need to look into the pressure drop in the reservoir, what we call it the reservoir drawdown, the pressure drop along the completion, and the uh, pressure drop in the tubing, Pressure drop if you have subsurface sub safety valve, pressure drop in the well head choke, in the flow lines, if we have risers, separators, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So all that the system needs to take you know, consideration of. All right. Number one, the flow in the porous media, how we are going to model the inflow from the reservoir to the completion. How can we model the artificial lift, whether it's e e electric submersible pump or gas lift or any other uh, artificial lift means? We also need to, mo to, to, to model all the flow regimes. As you know, we, when we have multi-phase flow, we can have you know, all kinds. Of, it could be bubble flow. It could be uh, you know, annular flow, et cetera, et cetera. So all these, that's, as you can see here, it's not an easy system. It's a complex system. And because we have hydrocarbon, we have the multi-phase that can change along the flow path. And that's why you need really a, a powerful tool, powerful simulator to model this multi-phase flow. So if we look into the concept of, of what we call the nodal analysis, all right, in which we look into the flowing bottom hole pressure in the well, right, and then we see how the flowing bottom hole pressure will change by changing the flow rate, okay? For example, if there is no production, so let's assume that on the x-axis is the flow rate, the y-axis is the, is the flowing bottom hole pressure, okay? So when the production is zero, basically we're starting at this point, the flowing bottom hole pressure will equal the reservoir pressure because there is no drawdown, correct? Now, as we start production, the last pressure that that our the, the, that the flowing bottle bottle pressure will will see is the is the separator pressure. Okay, and now this is the IPR. This is the inflow performance relationship that will take into consideration the drawdown from the reservoir to the well. All right. And then also we have the outflow that represents the pressure drop, the relationship between the flow and bottom pressure and the flow rate, but considering the pressure from the separator. This is what we call the inflow and outflow or IPR and, and VLP, vertical lift performance. The intersection between the two points, the two curves will define the operating condition at this, at this point, okay? So PipeSim has this concept in addition to other, other concepts to model the production in the well. So for example, if we do, if we make production stimulation where we can reduce the pressure drop 
or the drawdown in the completion by via hydraulic fracturing, for example, this IPR curve will go up, and then we will have the intersection between the inflow and the outflow moving to the right, then we have more production, right? Similarly, if we can install an ESP, we can bring the outflow curve down, okay? And then also we can bring the intersection further to the right so that we can increase the production, okay? So this is the, the, the concept of, uh, of nodal analysis, right? Now, we need also to consider not only the pressure drop, but also the, the temperature drop, okay? And this, this is important because, as you know, the fluid hydrocarbon properties such as viscosity, density, Reynolds number, all these, all these parameters are also affected by the temperatures, okay? So we will need to take into consideration the temperature and the, the delta P in the tubing, delta P across all the fittings, all right? And then, and then we need to, to, to consider the convection heat transfer, the conduction heat transfer, Jolto's Thompson effect, and so, and, and so on and so on. All that is important. And this is now, both when we consider the pressure and the temperature, we can, the, the simulator can, can follow the pressure temperature profile of the fluid, all right? And then we can, we can define whether we could have scale, all right? We could have hydrate, et cetera, et cetera. And this is how you, you need to, to, to uh, you know, handle your production system to avoid these blockage, uh, you know, conditions. So pipe sim can be used, as I said before, on the early field development for wheel design, pipeline design, network design, all right? And also it can be, and of course, this, this will take years, right, to put in place. And then once you have the, the production operations, this can go to days and hours, and you can do wheel optimization, pipeline optimization, and network optimization, okay? So all that can be used by a, a simulator such as PipeSim. PipeSim has uh, an advanced three-phase mechanistic flow model called Olga S, Olga Steady State. It's the industry standard multi-phase flow model with uh, more than 150 million of research investment in Olga since the 80s, all right? So Olga is, as I said, is our transient, this Schlumberger transient flow simulator. And, uh, you know, it has been uh, um, uh, co co accumulating uh, uh, research and development with, um, you know, uh, CINTEF, which is a research center in Norway, and the uh, and IFE also is, a, um, you know, a, 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 it's a research institute in Norway for flow um, technology, okay? PipeSim is not new. PipeSim has been there since the 80s. And, and uh, in, in 1984, PipeSim was, was, was firstly released, and it was only keyword driven. Keyword meaning the, the user has to go and type the, the uh, description of the pipes, description of the fluid, etc. right? And then in 1993, it was the first graphical user interface where it was 16 bit at the time, right? And then in, 19, in 2001, we have the second generation gra gra you know, graphical user interface, and it was 32 bit. And then in 2013, we have the new generation. And this is the same generation that we have today. And it's a continuous development. We have a new release in this, in this year, targeted in fourth quarter, uh, which is nine, uh, 2021, okay? For the heat transfer, PipeSim has uh, complete energy equations. It has rigorous thermodynamics. It can model conduction and convection. And it, it will consider the flow regimes in, in calculating the heat transfer. It has rigorous buried pipe model developed by Schlumberger. And it, it, it has a heat transfer in wheel bore uh, using Ramey model. This is uh, uh, added into the new release. It's going to be available in, in, in 2021.1 release. And it considers Joel Thompson effects across fittings, which is very important. 
Pipesim also is very powerful in fluid characterization. It has a rigorous compositional models using multi-flash. Multi-flash is, um, you know, a third-party fluid characterization uh, package by KBC. It is tightly integrated with Pipesim. We have E300, which is uh, it's another uh, fluid characterization pa package. And also we have GERG, which is an advanced gas equation of state. We have thermodynamics prediction of asphaltene, wax, hydrate, and scale, okay? All these are uh, major problems of, of, of solid deposition inside pipeline uh, walls. It's worth mentioning that corrosion and scaling accounts for 19% of well integrity failures globally. This, is, this can be uh, translated into uh, about $200 million a day of revenue loss. And this is really significant. Pipe sim network simulation. Um, it's, it's really, many people who are not in this field don't realize that modeling production networks is very complex. And the reason for that is um, the, the, when the wells are connected with time, there are strong wells, there are new wells that are drilled, all right, and add it to the system. And they will be competing with the, with the weak wells. These weak, weak wells will have uh, lower pressure when, when the production reaches the surface. And then it may not be able to compete with the strong wells. This could cause what we call back pressure. Then the wells can, cannot flow. So it, it can be as simple as if you add just two or three wells to your production system, you might lose five or six wells that are already in production. And this is due to the, the, the uh, uh, you know, shared pressure uh, that propagates along the pipeline network. So it's really important that pipeline uh, network is modeled, uh, you know, um, uh, comprehensively and with, 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 a, with a strong numerical solver, solver such as, such as Pipesim. Why we need the, the network simulation? Because you will need it in the beginning in the field development. You, if, if you have a new field, you will need to know, for example, should I plan for um, gas lift or ESP for the wells? So even the wells themselves, you need to know uh, what is the tubing size that you need to, 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 uh, to use for, for the well. Are you going to drill a horizontal well or a vertical completion? Uh, do you have multi uh, stages or do you have multi zones in the reservoir? And if I drill these multi, multi zones and make them all of them produce, how would that affect the, the, the surface, surface production? All these questions when it comes to well placement and well drilling are very essential in the planning or the field development stage. You need also to, to see whether do I need, uh, if it's a sub-C, do I need to install a sub-C multi-phase booster, for example? Do I need, uh, you know, what kind of pipeline size do I use? This is very important because if you, if you put a uh, small pipeline size, right, this will, of course, uh, result in, in, uh, in blockage in, because there will be a lot, lot of pressure drop due to friction. But if you increase the pipeline size more than you need, then the fluid velocity in the pipeline will become less, and then there will be segregation between fluids. You will find that the water will start to, to settle at the bottom, right? And this will cause major problems because it will, it will result in, in, in corrosion, and then that, this will result in, in um, you know, leak uh, uh, into the pipeline. This is a major pipeline integrity issue. So designing the right size for your pipeline is very, very important. And the, the challenge is pipelines are not something cheap, right? Once you place them, they will stay there for decades, right? Uh, you go to, to, to many countries who have been producing oil for, for, for years. You could, you could easily find pipelines that are there for 40 years and they are still used, okay? So it's very important that you really size your pipelines properly, okay? When do I drill new wells? Okay, and, and what size of surface pump should I use in order to export uh, the, the, let's say the gas or, or, or the, the oil to my, to my sales point? 
and how can I inject? How can design the injection wells? When, when if I take the separated water and then re-inject it for pressure maintenance? As you can see here, all these questions need to be answered when you when you are doing the field development. Okay, and then will will hydrate form where, where, for, et cetera, et cetera. Now, after I have my my field and the, the field is is in production then what will happen 10 years later, okay? You have a mature field now that has been in, in, in production for many years. Now, how can you use the network simulation here? Then you need to, uh, to ask your qu questions such as, can I meet my contractual delivery next month? Now, the challenges are different, okay? Um, should I switch my multi-phase boosters from parallel to series to, let's say, to increase uh, the... the, the uh, the production flow rate, for example, how much methanol should I inject to to reduce the 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 uh, hydrate temperature, for example? When do I abandon the, these wells? The, the, there are many wells now that are st they start to produce less and they are you know fluctuating. Do I abandon them or not? Okay. How much gas gas left should I should I inject? Uh, should I stimulate this well, et cetera, et cetera? How to prevent severe uh, riser slugging and so on and so on. So all these questions need also to be taken into consideration once the field is, is the field is mature, okay? PipeSim can be also used for production optimization or network optimization, okay? You need to maximize your production at the lowest cost. What do I mean by that? In, in many uh, mature fields, you start to, to, to need, and even sometimes in new, in new fields, you might need some form of artificial lift, meaning uh, either electric electric muscle pump or gas lift or PCP, et cetera, all right? Now the question is, um, how much, what is the size of the pump? And, and when I, when I um, let's say I have the system is in place, how can I reduce the power consumption to maximize my, my, my production? And um, how can I reduce, for example, the gas lift rate to maximize my, my, my production? This is, a, this is an important question, and especially, you know, as you know, the, 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 hydro, the, the oil and gas industry has been really fragile in the past, in the past months. So, so cost is very important, all right, for any operator. Uh, how can I honor facility handling capacity? For example, with time, your water start to, to water production start to increase. If you have, let's say, um, uh, yet, let's say water layer under, under your, your, your oil, for example, then as the water increases, you, you might hit a limit of your, of your uh, facility, suppression facility. So you might need to say, okay, now let me, how can I reduce the production from the wells that are uh, cutting water or that, that are producing high water cut uh, without actually disturbing my system? So it's really a challenge because it's, it's really a back and forth and trial and error because the moment you change something, another well will, will be affected. And that's why you need what we call the network optimization. How can I increase my reservoir recovery? What do you mean by reservoir recovery? Meaning, meaning you will need, for example, to, lay, to delay water production or uh, you know, maximize your, your production from the reservoir. If you have gas coning, if you have water coning, for example, then you need to delay all that by restricting the, the production. Or sometimes you need even if the well has potential to, to, to produce more, you need to limit it in a certain amount. Suppose that the well can produce 5,000 barrels per day, but if you leave it like that, then the well will start to, it will start to invite water quickly, and then you will lose the, your, 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 your well faster, although you, you still have a lot of hydrocarbon in the reservoir. So it's a possibility that you might reduce the production, limit the production to say 2,000, for example, and you take much longer time of plateau because you are delaying actually the water production. How can I maintain asset integrity? And when we say asset integrity, we include pipelines, we include wells, 
and, and we include even the pumps. You need to operate the pumps in certain frequency so that you know, it doesn't uh, 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 you know, operate under uh, uh, or outside the operating envelopes, for example. So all these questions are interrelated. So you need an optimizer, a mathematical optimizer to tell you how you set your, your production conditions across all your wells. And this is what, what PipeSim can do for you. And this is, uh, I, I like this feature. PipeSim is integrated with the graphical user, graphical uh, information systems, GIS, right? And, and uh, this is just a screenshot of, of, of a model, uh, of a network model that, uh, as you can see here, we can, we can see the, uh, uh, once we run the network simulation, you can look into the, the results gradient along the pipelines. You have this uh, color coded uh, scale. And this applies to all the results in the network, pressure, temperature, velocity, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, so you can, you can visualize color coded results. You can capture flow line profiles easily. This is very uh, a nice feature, okay? Um, many people don't know that uh, in, in most uh, graphical uh, or so geographical information systems or services, even like Google Maps, it's not only 2D. Any point, any point on the map uh, has also the, the elevation, but we don't know that, right? So what we do in PipeSim, we have uh, um, you know, um, an, an, an agreement with a third party, um, it's ISRI basically, where and, uh, and, other, and other services as well, you can place your, your 2D uh, um, profile, pipeline profile on your map, and with a click of a button, the pipeline uh, elevation points will be captured automatically from, from the internet, right? And this is very useful because uh, in, in order for the, for the simulator to understand how the uh, pressure is changing, how the velocity is changing, you need really to capture the pipeline topography, pipeline profile changes. And this is possible, of course, if you have it uh, handy, uh, if you have it in Excel, or, but in many cases, it's, it's, it's very complex and may, it could be not, not available for you. With that, you can easily draw your pipeline profile along your 2D map, with a click of a button, the pipeline profiles can be captured easily from the GIS service, okay? You can also build pipeline network automatically. Um, what you can see here, here for example, what uh, in, in and this is in many uh, big oil and gas companies, they use what what is called uh, uh, GIS shape files. Uh, shape files are are nothing but a layer of the drawings of the pipelines. So you can import this shape layer or shape file, uh, lay it on top of your of, of your GIS area, and then pipe PipeSim can generate your network pipeline network automatically using this GIS shapefile. You can also design pipelines considering geospatial limitations. And this is very important. For example, if I have a, a mountain here, if I have a lake here, all right? And then you, 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 you'd like to, to, to um, drill a well in this area, but then you don't know how you're going to place your pipeline. So this is very useful because you can easily digitize your pipeline uh, 2D and then find uh, run simulation, okay, even before you, you place your pipeline. This is very, very uh, useful and very handy for, for all, uh, you know, op op operating companies. PipeSim also has what we call extensibility and automation using Python toolkit, right? So um, for many of the uh, fresh graduates and maybe even students in universities, we all know that Python now is the, is the new uh, programming language that really every engineer must learn. And my advice to everyone in this call here, if you want a better career, right? Data science and Python is a very, very, uh, uh, I would say, uh, important uh, learning uh, essential for you. You, you need to learn data science, you need to learn Python, even if you are a, a normal petroleum engineer, 
when you when you when you add this programming skill to your profile uh, when you add special python you can do miracles with it all right because because it's all about now it's all about data it's all about automation etc and we offer this uh, capability in pipeson what we call it python toolkit this empowers users with workflow automation you can build well and network models without using the ui without using the user interface with just writing uh, you know python scripts you will be able to build the model without opening the pipes in ui automatically you can literally build hundreds of worlds with the click of a button if you write the right script okay not only that you can update your models with operational and distant testing data if you have models and you need if you have an existing network model for example and then you need to you have a, a workflow where you have a digital oil field where you have measurements real-time measurements that are coming every hour every day and then you need to run the simulation and get the results back and create dashboards for example this can be done using python toolkit pipesim python toolkit because you can use pipesim as an engine as a back-end engine where you take the data, send the tools, run the models, get the results back and display it in a dashboard, okay? You, you can run batch simulations and analyze the results. You don't, if you, even if you, if you want to run, let's say, 100 combinations or 100 sensitivities, you can update the pressures, update the temperatures, update uh, the, 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 let's say, the, the gas oil ratios, et cetera, and they get the results back. You can do forecasting scenarios using that. It can facilitate using PipeSim as an engine, as a back-end calculator, okay? It replaces OpenLink API in PipeSim Classic. So um, I'm not, I'm probably sure that majority of you don't know that, but uh, PipeSim in the past used to have this uh, capability for, uh, you know, uh, extensibility and, uh, and automation using uh, a previous technology called OpenLink. And this was in Python Classic that stopped in 2012. Python is the development language for engineers. So again, I will, I will emphasize this again. All petroleum engineers today need to learn Python. This is very important. And it's simple to use. There are a lot of free um, tutorials. There are a lot of free training courses. And uh, I will probably ask uh, Nikhil and, uh, and Chata to, to uh, maybe, maybe they already have uh, uh, arranged such course. You need to, to really uh, offer uh, free courses for, for uh, Python programming, okay? It can be embedded uh, in Excel uh, where you can uh, automate, uh, you know, uh, the, the data exchange between Excel and, and Pipesim and you can build your own interface. So this is Excel, for example. You can build your own interface that will run PipeSim in the background and give the results back into Excel. And you can impress your boss and your, your colleagues with that. Okay. PipeSim is available uh, in Delphi environment. So um, um, I'm not sure if, you, if, 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 you're, if you're attending uh, uh, this session while you are already employed, in a company or you are still a student or you're a new graduate, fresh graduate, uh, PipeSim can be installed in the standalone uh, PC uh, as, as normal, or it can be accessed uh, through the internet. So in Schlumberger, we have what we call Delphi environment. Um, Delphi is our uh, uh, cloud-based uh, you know, environment where with using a URL and subscription, you would be able to, to go to the, uh, uh, the, all the technologies that Schlumberger software have today. And one of them is Pipesim. So you don't really need, or you don't have to install Pipesim in your machine. You can actually run it uh, through the internet. Uh, and what, what happens in the background is that because Pipesim is a Windows machine, we create a, a virtual machine for you in the cloud, all right? And then you, you will be able to, to, to run all the functionalities all right, uh, using using this this URL. Of course, you will need a, a bit of uh, fast uh, or, or high uh, high performance uh, internet, uh, high speed internet to do that. 
Okay. Now, um, let me show you a quick example, a quick video on uh, how I update completion properties, okay, using Python, right? So now this is a very simple Python script, okay, in which I have uh, a model name. So this is the model name. This is the path. I call it test. And then I, I have a save name. It's called test new, okay? So this is the test. This is the model, okay? What I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that, and I'm, I'm importing here an object called, uh, a library called model. Now I, I will be defining uh, model one equals model dot open, the model name. So it will open that in the background. And then I'm going to set a value, right? I'm going to set the, com set the completion reservoir pressure to become 3,210. And I'm, I'm also going to set the temperature and I'm, I'm also going to change the liquid PI. All that will happen without actually open, without opening the user interface, the model, the Python user interface, okay? So let's, let's do this. I hope that uh, with the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the internet speed that you have, you will be able to, to view the, uh, you know, um, I mean, the bandwidth is, is good enough for you to, to see. Uh, okay. okay, so the video is starting now. So this is the model, okay? This is the path, the location where the uh, model is stored. I will uh, need to define it here and and uh, uh, in python uh, you 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 probably need to uh, with one option is actually to to put all the uh, slashes uh, forward slashes okay so you need to change this now this just to define the of course there are there are some other tricks for for for, for doing that but let me just show you uh, this way, right? So I'm defining now the model path. Now I'm going to change the reservoir pressure to 3000. I'm going to use 250 and 20 for the liquid PI. Let me just open the model for you. Just, uh, just to show you, I'm, I'm, uh, show you the, the current values. And then I'm gonna open it uh, after, after it is saved, okay? So here we go, I'm going to the completion and if I click on the completion tab, the current reservoir pressure in the model is 5,000 and I'm gonna change it to 3,000. The reservoir temperature, I'm gonna change it to 210, it's currently 250. The productivity index is 20 and I'm gonna change it to 30. Again, this is just an example. I can do everything, literally everything if I want. I will close the model now. As you can see in, in the folder, I don't have the other uh, will name, which is test one or uh, test new. I'm gonna run. So just by running the Python script, it is happening now. It is opening the model in the background. It, it, it will use all these scripts to up, update the parameters that I've just added. And then it is gonna save. So it now saved the test new. I will open the updated model. And now you will see that it has the new parameters. So this is what we call the Python toolkit or the extensibility framework where you can interact with the model without opening the UI. And as I said, you can, you can build a new models from scratch, you can update models, you can run operational workflows, et cetera, et cetera with that. Okay, so now let us uh, go to the second one. So now, um, 
this is uh, an example of uh, automatic pipeline network construction using GIS shapefiles. GIS stands for Geographic Information Systems. And the shapefile, as I said, is nothing but a file with, with uh, lines and dots. Uh, for example, I mean, in, uh, in, let's say, Google Maps, it is composed of multiple layers, multiple shapefiles. You can, for example, uh, uh, switch off the uh, the actual map and look into the uh, into the uh, uh, roads and the uh, cities, lines, etc. So this is again a shape file, right? So it's layers of of of, of uh, let's say lines and maybe colors, etc. That are uh, on top of each other. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to import a shape file that contains pipelines, right? and connections, and I'm going to construct a pipeline network in PipeSim automatically. So I'll click on import network. So this is the shapefile, .shp. And now when I click on open, see what happens now. So now it found that the shape file has certain, uh, you know, um, attributes we call it. So we have pipe pipe inside the emitter, pipe wall thickness, right, and pipe roughness. So as you can see here, I need to override because the uh, the uh, property is not available. So now what will happen is that you see, it it actually constructed my two D network. And all these are new flow lines generated automatically from the shape file. If I double click on the pipeline, I will see the horizontal distance, the latitude and the longitude, but I'm still missing the measured distance and the elevation. How, how can, I, can I import that? How can I generate that? Well, I can simply go to capture elevation. So automatically, when I click on capture elevation, PipeSim will go to the, uh, for example, ESRI service in this, in this, as you can see, data sources ESRI, and it will uh, find the pipeline profiles automatically from the internet. And this is free, free, free for all PipeSim users. Okay. As you can see here, now the elevation has been captured and also the distance, and all the red colors now is gone. However, pipelines are not connected to wells yet, right? Because the shape file just has the, the start and the end of the, uh, of the pipelines. So now I'm going to save this network model and I call it new model without wells. Okay. So now, as you can see here, I don't have wells, it's just pipelines. And now I have a network that contains only pipelines without wells. Okay. Next, I will show you the magic now. I'm going to automatically build well models using Python script from Excel. And then I'm going also to update the network model that I just created. And all the beginning of the pipelines, I'm going to place wells there. And all that without touching the user interface. Okay, let me do that. Sorry. Here we go, sorry. So <clears throat> we have already developed a Python script for this purpose. So I have a Python script that will construct, that will build will models from Excel, from data in Excel, okay? This script is launched through PipeSim using, using uh, PipeSim Python plugin in Excel. This is the data, okay? We have wills. We have 20 wells, okay, that I'm going to build from scratch. 
I'm going to place them in this GIS location where I have the latitude, the longitude. I will use will templates, starting with will templates, and I'm going to update the data. Of course, this is not necessary, but, but this is for simplicity. So let me just show you with the template. So I have a template. This template has already some uh, data, some casing, tubing, completion, et cetera. So what I'm going to do that is that I'm going to update each of the templates with data and then store it in the, uh, the GIS location into my, um, into my uh, uh, network model that I built in the previous slide, okay? So I'm going to add the electric submersible pumps. So these are the ESP properties. Sorry, it's a bit. Uh, uh, so yeah, let me just, yeah, one second. So these are the will templates. And now we have three templates. We are going to add ESPs, electric submersible pumps. I'm going to, uh, to change the uh, phase ratio for the IPRs. Um, I will keep the pressures. I'm going to add a plant as a sink in this location, and I'm going to add a check valve, okay, in this location. Now, let me just show you the script. So this is the script that is developed to build the models from scratch. Now, we are going to insert the original model name. So this is, as you, as you remember, new model without wells. The video is uh, yeah, without wells. And then I'm going to save it in a new name. I'm going to call it with wells. OK, this is the saved model. And now I click on this button that will launch everything in the background. And after a few seconds, the new model is, la is launched. And as you, as you will see now, all the wells have been added automatically without me touching the user interface. All, that, all the data came from Excel, right? ESPs have been added. Each well is placed in the right location because I define the, um, you know, the UI, the, uh, the UTM coordinates, the latitude and the longitude, okay? So you can learn more, okay? In PipeSim, if you download PipeSim, there is a, there is a number of videos and case studies, all right? And uh, in addition to that, uh, we have a very uh, powerful step-by-step -step guide uh, in the help system. And we also have uh, a number of, um, you know, YouTube videos on, on Schlumberger official YouTube channel. We have also uh, a LinkedIn Pipeson group that you can also, um, uh, you know, be part of. And uh, thank you. So let me ask uh, Nikhil and uh, Chata, do we have time uh, so that I can uh, do a live demo or, uh, or that's it? Yes, sir, sure. We have a lot of time, you can go. Perfect. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, before I go to the demo, um, do we, uh, Anybody has a question? Do, do, do you want to type the question in the chat or uh, we can take uh, sir, live questions? What we can do, sir, if anyone has any question, they can raise their hand and we will unmute you and they can directly ask questions with you. Okay. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question, you can raise your hand through, uh, through Zoom and then uh, we can uh, you know, take it. Otherwise, uh, if no questions, I can launch PipeSim now. Okay, Mr. Ali, you can go ahead 
you can ask your no, question. Ahead, please, Ali. Hi, thank you very much for this great presentation. Uh, I would like to know the sort of differences or the similarities. I see now the similarities between this PETEX software. We have this, you know, from the PETEX package, uh, Prosper, Gap. I see there are quite a lot of similarities. And what would be you say that, okay, what we have in, in pipes in uh, the difference from those packages? Sure. So, so um, number one, um, PipeSim has the, uh, the GIS integration, okay? Uh, I will not, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's, it's right that I, uh, uh, let's say, criticize or, or uh, show any weakness of any other product for a competitor. Let me, let me tell you the things that, that uh, PipeSim has. And then you can you can uh, find out yourself whether the other competitor has it or not. Okay. Yeah. So number one, um, PipeSim has the GIS integration, all right? Where you can run models, you can uh, um, uh, look into the uh, results gradient along the GIS. You can um, build networks automatically from uh, the GIS, uh, and so on. So this is a, a very important feature. Um, we also have uh, the, uh, the net, our network optimizer, uh, our Python network optimizer is, is uh, unique in a sense that the, and even, even the network simulation. So in the network simulator, let me just show you one, 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 one thing here. If I go to the, uh, sorry, the GIS map and then, uh, Go to format. So as you can see here, this is the the results gradient. Okay. Uh, one more one more important thing that PipeSim is unique about is that the whole network, the whole network, is um, you know is modeled in the same model. You don't have a separate software for the walls, another software for the network. Okay. So the well, if you want to model a well, it's in the same model. Just you can either double click on it right away and it will open for you all the well simulation capabilities, literally everything, all right? If you want to model the, the, the so this is the well, okay? And you can, you can do all the simulation tasks in the well, right? Um, you can switch from the home, you can go to the well perspective and then the whole canvas, the whole software will, will focus on wells, okay? Where you can run, for example, directly nodal analysis, all right, for the well without actually affecting your network, okay? Uh, one of the, uh, so this is the nodal analysis for the well itself, although I am in the same model, in the same network model, okay? In addition to this, when PipeSim solves the, the network, including the wells, we don't, PipeSim do not rely on, on VLP curves. It, it, it doesn't, you, you don't need to construct uh, outflow curves. You put ranges of the water cut, the GUR, the rates, et cetera, uh, because, because eventually the software needs to do interpolation, okay? PipeSim network so solver solves the whole network from the reservoir, from the completion, all the way to the suppression facility, everything in one model, okay? So this is another uh, unique feature, right? And, and there are also, also, also uh, others uh, like, uh, you know, the, the availability of the 64-bit uh, version, the ability of uh, PipeSim in the cloud uh, under Delphi environment, uh, the ability, for example, to, to connect natively with Eclipse, which is our native which is Lumberjay native simulator and, and, and others. So, um, and by the way, um, um, uh, you know, okay, that's it. This is an open, uh, this is an, an, an open, uh, I would say um, event. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I feel that uh, my, my, my objective today is to show you pipes and capabilities and not um, uh, compare it with any other product. I hope I hope that's fine with you. Yes, Perfect. definitely. I was not going to expect it uh, to compare it. Thank you very much. 
then you know the, this very great this capability you said you don't generate the VLP curves that the like to interpolate. Then it's it's very interesting. How would you solve the network here? Then? So that's that's the that's the thing. So so PipeSim has a very powerful numerical solver in the background that will that will consider the flow path. Let me show you. So I, I now I have run the network simulation, right? So now mm -hmm. if I go to the network simulation, I have what we call the profile results. The profile results starts from the well, right, all the way to the flow line, and I can even have a plot that will start from the reservoir along the tubing, and then the, the flow line. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not only this, you can actually, if you have, for example, uh, certain flow lines, you can, you can. Let's see. Let me just show you one, one, one uh, nice feature. So here, I, I have the network schematic. So you, you, you don't even, you don't only have the GIS canvas. You have also the network schematic. Okay. Now, what if I want to show the pipeline, the pressure profile along all this path, right? Starting all, uh, starting from this well. So we have well four, and then we have this flow line P11, P12, P13, right? And then P16. So what I will do now, let me just show you again. Well four, P11, P12, P13. So I go to the, the to the simulation results. Now I go to let me just organize this. So I go to well four. This is well four. I put the control button, right? And then, um, okay, let me just check flow line. Um, so this is between J4 and J2. So J4 and J2, I, I'm, I will hold the control button, click on it, and then I'm gonna continue. I will see J2 to J9, so J2 to J9, here it is. And then I'm gonna also hold it until J9 to J1. So look, look what I have now. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the pressure from the completion from the reservoir in well four until you can you can follow 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 the path. All right, and then you can also compare that with all the wells that are connected to the same branch. Like for example, if you have well now five, all right, then between J5 and J4, you can do that as well. And you can you can have, very, have a very nice visualization for well five. Like for example, go here and then you add again, well five. So this is well five now. And as you can see here, it is connected to the same flow line. So that's the that's the beauty. That's the powerful, I would say, feature in PipeSim where wells and pipeline networks are connected together. They're not separate. You don't model a separate. You don't need a separate software, a separate even license, a separate software to construct your well models. Everything in one integrated model. Yeah. Great. Uh, I believe it's uh, just a tip from the iceberg. But thank you very much for your answers. Absolutely. So and, um, yes, another question. Yes, yeah, so we have one more speaker. So Mr. Emmanuel, you can ask your question. I'm unmuting you. Just good evening. Hi. Okay. The question I want to ask here is that uh, in a node analysis, how can we be able to have access to, even though it's a demo uh, biases, the demo software to be able to enable we that as fresh graduates to be able to follow along with the training. <laughs> so, so um, you know, the, the problem is that we in, in Schlumberger, we have a commercial model that we, we sell software to companies, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Having uh, demo licenses to, to uh, you know, uh, to individuals is very, very difficult because we cannot manage. I mean, in each area, we have what we call account manager, and this account manager is responsible for pro providing all the licenses. Our our license system is is uh, is very restricted, and, and if we really open it to individuals, it will be impossible to track. So, unfortunately, okay. uh, this is not uh, something that that we can offer. But as as I said, you can have uh, you can look into the videos. You can. Uh, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, learn from, uh, you know, uh, 
from the help. I can share the help with you if you want. But um, uh, and if if you are if you are you know part of a university, maybe the university already uh, has a license. Okay. Sorry for that. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Yang, I'm unmuting you. You can ask your question. Okay. Uh, salute to everyone. I'm Yannick. My question is on the type sim and Olga. You mentioned Olga like a Grandian simulator. I want to ask on a practical point of view, what is the add-on from simulating with PipeSim and simulating with Olga? Okay. That's a good question. So, so um, the, the objective of, of using uh, both software is flow assurance, okay? But you will find in any company, you will find what we call them flow assurance uh, specialists where they really need to look into not only the steady state conditions, but also the transients. Let me just explain. For example, if there is a pipe, if there is a, 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 this, this trunk line here, right? You just zoom in. You have a well, and then you have this trunk line, and then you, you go to the field, and then you find that this well, if you go, you go to the pressure gauge of this well, you'll find that pressure gauge is changing, all right? The production is, is isolating, right? So, so, um, and then with time, the, you see that the production in this well is declining, all right? Uh, PipeSim cannot, cannot handle such, such, such scenario. You really need to go into Olga, which is the transient simulator, and try to simulate what is happening. Uh, you will need to, maybe there is a, what we call it, the, maybe there is a slugging, maybe there is, maybe the flow is a sluggish flow, and it's oscillating, right? And then it, it could die eventually. And maybe there is, uh, uh, you know, pressure uh, waves coming in the reservoir. So all these things that are related to are related production uh, dynamics, uh, you need Olga to, to, to do it. Uh, again, for example, if you want to really, uh, let's say, um, design uh, scraping, if you want, one, one of the, uh, uh, you know, pipeline management or pipeline integrity management uh, uh, um, practices is what we call uh, 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 pigging. All right. So pigging is 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 a device is a let's say an equipment that you 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 inject you ins you you, uh, you insert within the pipeline and then it will move along the pipeline and it will clean to swipe all the debris and so on from inside the pipeline. Olga will help you to design this pigging operation the size, the timing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So that's why the, the uh, pipe sim is used for overall production modeling, production optimization, uh, whereas, whereas Olga focuses on uh, uh, trunk lines, on certain pipelines for advanced flow assurance studies where the production dynamics is taken into consideration. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yanni, for the question, and thank you, sir, for your quick reply. So now, Mr. Anil Bansal, I'm unmuting you. You can ask your question. My question is regarding uh, the network simulation uh, yes. of the existing network. If uh, yes. some new wells are added, and then yes. uh, the simulation, and the, it may it may impact on the existing wells. Uh, uh, so we'll reduce the reduction reduction in the flow rates or some production from the existing wells. So right. how it will be like uh, because uh, initially it was uh, some uh, some production profile was there and the year wise there are the different different flow rates. So how it will be helpful pipesim in uh, handling that situation? That's a very good question, and uh, you know I will I promise you that I will answer this question in detail two weeks from now, because there we are going to talk about network optimization. But I will show you a glimpse. We have a, a functionality called network optimizer in which you click on it. And then in the network optimization, you can put your optimization control. You can maximize oil rate, maximize liquid rate. And then 
you need to define what is your control parameter. Either, for example, choke bean size, if it's a gas well, or if it's an oil well, the ESP frequency, PCP speed, gas lift rate. And then you, could, you can put local constraints on the wells. Like, for example, you can go to certain wells and then um, uh, you can define what is the maximum production per well. You can also go to the flow line level and then you can, on the, on the flow lines, you can define what is the maximum liquid rate, et cetera, et cetera. So all these uh, are available, uh, you know, to, to, to help you put, uh, you control your, 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 your production in the network. And, and as I said, I'm going to show you that in, in two weeks from now. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Anil, for your question. Okay, yeah, so we will not take much question. We'll just take this last question by Hamai. So I'm unmuting you. You can ask a question. Hi, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, very good presentation and a brief uh, introduction to Python. I just wanted to know about the Python toolkit. All the scripts are available with the Python in any uh, uh, handy tool book or somewhere, so, or so, you need to develop so on if, your own. Well, if, if, you, if you download, let me show you. If you download Pipesim, uh, there will be a, uh, you know, a good number of examples that, let me show you. So here, if you go to the uh, developer tools, then Python toolkit, then examples. There are tons of examples here, okay? Like for example, you can, it can be as simple as open and close, right? So double click on it. And then, uh, you know, I'm, I'm using VS Code as, a, as an editor for my Python. So where is it? it is, yeah. So this is a, an example. It says model open, model equals model open from case study, this one, okay? So, as you can see here, I mean, the, there, there are a lot of examples. This is just one example. Another example is uh, OpenSafe, for example. And here we go. There is also some advanced uh, examples, such as um, Create Network. Double click on it. You will see uh, very, uh, detailed examples on how to do things. So um, as I said, uh, there are tons of examples that can be uh, used for you to start with. And uh, then you can customize them based on your, your own need. So yeah, there, there are a lot of uh, use cases here. Yes? Okay, so thank you, Sandra. You can go ahead with the lecture. Okay. so. Um, I think, I think I'm, I'm almost there. So right now, as I said, we have two perspectives. We have the network with the will perspective in which we can look into the will. So this is the will, right? We have casing, we have tubing, all right? We have what we call uh, interactive will model uh, capability. Like for example, I can drag and drop Let's say I need to add a pump. So this is an ESP. I can drag and drop a pump. Okay. Then I can, of course, define the pump, etc. I can just, you know, change the depth of the pump as I go. Delete. I can add uh, again uh, artificial lift. And what we have also, this is the deviation survey. So currently it is vertical, okay? If it is 2D, right? I can add the deviation survey and 
me just show, just show you an example where uh, we have uh, a good deviation survey. So uh, if I go to the workspace, and then new, then I have, for example, I have, let's say, uh, this example here. Now, as you can see here, this is the deviation survey. And now I can uh, even change the format of my, uh, of my well, and I can, I can make it like quarter. This is for visualization purposes, full, right? Half, okay. So um, uh, again, uh, I mean, just in response to Ali who asked the question, I don't want to, to compare our product with any other competitor, but you can see yourself, okay? So this is, uh, this is for the well, right? So we have the well deviation survey, the heat transfer, right? You can enter the heat transfer, you can calculate, you can ask the software to calculate the heat transfer for you. Tubular, if you have tubing or casing, right? Downhole equipments, I can add any other equipment, right? Right now we have a packer here. We can of course remove this packer so that it becomes a tubing and annular flow. Now for the completion, we have a number of uh, IPR models, okay? So the geometry is either vertical or horizontal. For vertical geometry, I have a list of IPR models, productivity index, Vogel, Fitkovich, Jones, back pressure for gas, for chimer for gas, Darcy and hydraulic fracture, okay? Uh, you can also change that to horizontal. And then we have single point, which is Joshi and Babu and Ode, or you can go to distributed, and then you will have what we call the distributed PI, or the trilinear IPR, the transient IPR. The trilinear transient IPR is, is the one used for unconventionals. And, and uh, this is unique in Pipesim, uh, where you can model uh, shale formations uh, with, with multiple fractures up to nano Darcy, okay? Um, and then uh, on the same well, you can, you can add surface equipments. If you just uh, go to, uh, the original one so that we are not, uh, we don't need to enter new data. So this was, I think it was, uh, let's keep the PI. So the PI now is uh, say five, okay? So now we can add surface equipment, all right? And all that, you know, is interactive. So you can even go to the insert and then you can add also more equipment um, to, to, to the well, right? Um, even if I have if I have one well, I can run it as a network. So I can see easily convert it into a network perspective, and then this becomes a network perspective, right? And and I can I can also convert it into a GIS. So let me just uh, do that. So what I will do is that I'm gonna go to GIS, and now I need to zoom in to an area where I need to place the well, all right? So what I will do is that I'm gonna zoom into India, for example. By the way, I don't know where are your fields, uh, India. So is it in the east, west? Where do you have wells? Anybody? So you can go for the Cambay Basin. Where, where is it? East, west? I don't know. East. It's a east, sir. East. Near Gujarat, for example, or well, maybe. So let's assume that I do have uh, a field that is maybe here. Sorry, your voice is fluctuating. So that is here. Okay. Assumption, right? So now what I will do, I'll just click on okay. Automatically. Sir, your voice is fluctuating. Can you please check it out? My voice? Ah. Yes, the, the, the problem. Can you hear me now? 
and uh, so once he speaks, no, sir, just I think the mic issue. Can you hear me? Okay, sir, now we can start. Can you hear me? Parsman, if you're also, if you can drop in the chat box. Is it okay for you, Parsman? And you. Yes, a voice is not. I think mic issue, sir, because of mic issue or. Yes, sir, the audio is fluctuating. That's why. Okay, you can rejoin, no issue. Um, so I will, uh, so what I did is I, I was, I was outside and then I want to zoom an area to place my will. Okay. So now let's assume that I have zoomed to this area. Let's assume that I have a will in this area. All right. I hope I don't drill my will in some of, uh, you know, some farm or something. So what I'm going to do, so let me just show you here. I will just uh, delete this flow line and delete this also, this flow line. And then I have this junction and then I have this uh, sink. So now what I will do, I'm going to connect flow line, all right? Starting from here. So what will happen? Okay, let me just uh, move this line. Ah, second, second, second. So this is, uh, this is the well here. So let's assume that this is the flow path, okay? So what I will do is that I'm going to click like this, and then I, I will start digitizing. I'm just clicking, huh? I'm clicking now on my, my pipeline is being constructed as I go. And then I'm going to add another flow line. Am I being uh, heard? Good. I see that the uh, my machine is is slow. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you, sir. We can go okay, ahead. Very good. Yeah. So now I'll, I'll continue basically adding another flow line. So now, as you can see here, I have constructed my flow line. If I double click here, I will have this flow line horizontal distance. It is captured automatically from the location. I just need to enter the inside diameter, let's say four. Okay. And then this one is also four. And now I will have to simply go to format and then I need to click on capture the elevation. So with that, if I double click now, I find that the system was able to capture my elevation based on the topography on the land, okay? This can also be, this. there is another service and I can also define the interval and the maximum number of points. Now with this, I can go directly and run my PT profile that starts from the well until the top side. So right now, the my TPT, you know, it, the branch start at the reservoir, the branch it end as, a, as the top side, at the top side, and then I click on run. Now it tells me how much the well will produce. So this well has a pump. So right now, this is the starting point. This is my reservoir. This is my flow bottom hole point. This is my pressure profile below the pump. 
Then this is my, this is the pressure across the pump, as you can see here. And then this is the pressure profile in the tubing. And then until it reaches <coughs> the surface. And this is the pressure drop along the, the surface. Now the production is <coughs> 2,128 uh, barrels per day. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's it for today. Let's uh, let's uh, <coughs> next week. I'm going to uh, go into detail into all the well capabilities, the different tasks. <coughs> I'm going to design an ESP and maybe maybe a gas lift, and then go into the different uh, you know IPR methods, etc. For the well. <coughs>